This was a consensual relationship. Sounds like it was a pretty long time ago. Um, we presume it was an affair because he's been married for a long, long time, but the company says that's not the issue, actually. It's that he shouldn't have been fraternizing with an employee regardless. Let me ask you this. 20% of people who get married, they marry somebody from work. Have we gone too far here? Well, you know, this isn't a moral issue. This is a culture issue for the company. What's the difference? And, um, the, the company is trying to set a certain um, standards, certain guidelines, certain values that they want everyone to abide by. And as the CEO, uh, you need to be the standard bearer for those guidelines and values. And if you violate them, then you need to suffer the consequences. Should she have been fired as well? Yes. I, I, if, if the, the policy should be applied universally. Joanne, have we gone too far? Has the world gone crazy? You know how many people here at CNBC work together and got married? I don't even want to go. I don't want to even start. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're I, sitting with one. Right. Well, <laughs> I think that's awesome for you, Tyler. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have to actually separate this for a moment from Me Too and that movement. This is not Me Too. Me Too is harassment. Is, first of all, it's not harassment. But right. secondly, we have to separate it from the entire sexual harassment part in that this is a rule. He broke a rule. And there are consequences if you break the rules. And whether that rule has to do with sharing information, with how you file your expense accounts, or with office relationships, you do need to uphold the standards of the rules. It was a long time ago, we presume, right? Things have changed. I mean, I would yes, bet that if Intel you know, started to go through everybody who happened to be dating at the time that this event occurred, there'd be a lot of people. There'd be a lot, be a lot of people. Lose a job. That, that be but do we question. know that for sure? Do we know that, that he had this relationship before the rule was in place, which would be an no, entirely different situation. We I, don't really know all of the issues around this particular situation, but I will tell you the one thing that everybody should pay attention to here is the idea that in technology, in Silicon Valley, as with in the finance industry, they are way, way, so, way behind in terms so of issues uh, of gender. Are, are you raising the possibility that this relationship began and ended in a, at a time, and Denise, jump in here as well, at a time where that rule may not have been in place? We don't so if know. He, no, if we don't, if it was, if it, the, we don't know, yeah. right? right? But one if assumes that, that the, the rule was in place at the time of the relationship. Because it's, it's be very, it seems to me, unfair to sort of post facto impose uh, a penalty on a guy who was not violating a policy that wasn't forbidden at the right. time. Right. If that had been the case, and I think the situation is different, but regardless, you have to keep in mind, this is a highly visible employee, your CEO. And this is an opportunity. This is really, this was a pivotal moment for Intel's board and the organization as a whole to make a statement about how strongly they adhere so, to their guidelines so and values. And, I, I understand and so, that. I understand the importance of applying the, the policy to the to the top person all the way down through the through the organization. So what happens now if I work at Intel and I am a manager and I am dating someone who is not a manager? What do I do and what does the company do? Right. Well, I think you have to re-examine your relationship and, and move your behaviors in line with those guidelines and values. I think you got to quit, don't company. you? Right? You've already violated yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, or leave the company. company. So not quit. You should be fired, according to right, what Intel's right. board has done with Brian Krasanich. Well, Anybody who has a relationship right. should be fired, right? I mean, if that's, and I, I guess that gets Which to has my implications question. for your exit packages, sure, your seven, absolutely. et cetera, right. Isn't there a yeah. gray area? Is there not, is it always black and white? Any violation of any company yeah. rule Results in firing? Well, look, if right. you violate Again, the I rules, think... there are consequences for violating the rules. Sure, I think the, I, I the get shame that, of but all is the this... consequence always firing the guy? I, I have... The guy who brought the stock price up by 120% while he was there. Yes, but there's consequences for breaking the rules, which he would know, and he's the CEO. So if you make exceptions right. for him, then, then you're on a slippery slope. Who I else bet do when you he make had the affair, he didn't know he was going to be CEO. So, well, we don't <laughs> know. Really Again, know. we don't know that. But you know what? What we do know is he actually has been one of the great champions in Silicon Valley for gender equality. Now, there, but there that's are three separate. quarters Isn't male. Isn't that separate from it, this relationship? It's gender separate, equality it's is a different issue. It is separate, but I do think that it is worth pointing out that this is a man who, three years ago in 2015, announced a $300 million program to try and increase diversity. And there, it, diversity throughout the ranks, women as well as other uh, underrepresented groups. And I think that that is an issue that Silicon Valley is really, really struggling with. And it's really hard to separate that out from 
So, the, so Denise, I mean, I, I want right to come back to, to, to Melissa's point, which is, should anyone who is now involved in a fraternal relationship with, with a co-worker at at Intel yeah. be fired summarily? Uh, and if, if that's what the policy says, you break this, yes. this yes. rule, you're out. Yeah, I think that they should be asked to leave, you know, be probably given, you know, the option or, or the opportunity to leave um, now. Um, but, you know, these guidelines are in place to reduce the risk that companies have. And the board needs to fulfill their responsibility to manage their risks, manage the risks of the organization. So by, by enforcing this decision with the CEO and then having that kind of be visible to everyone else, the board has done a, a smart thing by making sure that everyone knows clearly what is expected Denise, of them and therefore they're fulfilling their responsibility. Isn't it hard yes. to legislate against love? <laughs> Again, this is not this is not a moral issue, you know. I, I and and frankly, the CEO, he's Brian's going to be fine, you know. I think that this will blow over for him professionally, and he he will go on and, and you know lead another company, and they'll be fine. But the long term effect at Intel, that's not the point. That everyone be in the organization will know. It's not the point yeah, that he's going to be fine. But it, it should be in theory. He should not be fine. I mean, if this is a violation enough to get him fired as CEO of Intel, then it should not be. He should not go on with his life and, and be just because then it's just purely. Right, exactly. Don't worry, he's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. it's symbolic. Exactly. Then it really didn't mean anything to right. begin with. Exactly. Well, which has been the case with other executives who have been in these relationships. I mean, think about Mark Hurd. Mark Hurd, who is right? now the CEO now of Oracle, CEO right? Of Oracle yeah. after having something similar happen at HP. Yeah. Well, look, I think it? that there, 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 there needs to be opportunity for someone to un, or, or, um, be forgiven, you know, to to change their course, do something right. So I don't think that that's what I mean by I think that he's going but to be I fine. Denise, I think that, you know, Denise has raised a very um, interesting point, which is this is not a moral issue. This is a rules issue. So if the rules are flawed, then it is up to the board. Should we be changing the, the rules? The core of rules is some kind of morality, right? Moral the judgment. core right. of this rule is that the reason you don't want a manager dating somebody within the company is perhaps they have some kind of power over them. Somehow they're going to affect right. their, their career, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it is a moral issue, quite frankly. I, 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 this slice and dicing of culture and morality, I think, is quite silly on your part. Well, and, he, but it's okay. I, and actually, <laughs> I would... I would also say it's a trust issue in the sense that at this point um, he has visibly broken the trust um, that the board and the organization has in him by violating this guideline. Mm -hmm. And that kind of trust specifically at the CEO level is very hard to regain. So I do think that at this point it's time for everyone to kind of move on and, and, and learn the lesson. Everyone in the organization understands where the, where, uh, the organization stands on their values and you'll know, get a new leader in there who can start with a fresh lead and who can you know, start building that trust again. Right. That's a great point, by the way, because presumably he knew he was breaking the rules, right? And so yes. look, that's what the rules are in place for. And if you do not penalize a CEO for breaking the rules, then you have a very, very slippery slope and you have a hard time with the rest of your organization. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.